1981, the ABC network released a show that would follow the underdog story. It's the classic tale of a nobody who is chosen to do extraordinary things. While on a field trip with his students, teacher Ralph Hinckley has an alien encounter. These aliens give him a red and black suit with a cape for him to wear so he can fight for truth and justice. The only other witness is an FBI agent, Bill Maxwell, who is also chosen by the aliens to collaborate with Ralph. Pam Davidson, Ralph's lawyer, who is handling his divorce, is eventually coerced to join Ralph and Bill on their missions. When worn, the suit gives Ralph the power of flight, super strength, invisibility, the power of telekinesis, x-ray vision, super speed, and the power to shrink his body. There is one downfall when he puts on the suit is not being able to fly well and not being able to land in a skillful fashion. Ralph doesn't really know how to operate the suit. After he loses the instruction manual, his lack of flying experience makes for some great comedic moments throughout the series. Titled the Greatest American Hero. The series would run for three seasons, and it would include a spin-off series titled The Greatest American Heroine, which was created but never released. The Greatest American Hero was created and produced by successful TV producer Stephen J. Cannell, who was responsible for bringing us some of the greatest TV shows ever produced, including The Rockford Files, The A-Team, Hunter, to 21 Jump Street, the idea of like what would happen if you or I were actually given a super suit from outer space what would it do in your real life what would happen we were just kind of kicking it around in my office so it would ruin your life here I am I'm a successful te television executive I'm, I've got three shows on the air and now I got to go put on a spandex suit with a little jockey underwear and a cape and run around in public I'm dead <laughs> it's over I'll never sell another show they're gonna lock me up and that I thought that is funny if you had to like wear this suit around in public. Well, what happens when your girlfriend catches you in it? What do you tell her? That's a funny scene to write. So I, I didn't know whether it was a one joke premise or not, but I had to write that two hours. And The Greatest American Hero would also be the first of Cannell's shows to feature the iconic Stephen J. Cannell Productions logo. The series premiered as a two hour pilot movie on March the 18th of 1981. Stephen Cannell had originally planned The Greatest American Hero as a series which focused on real-life problems. As agreed, originally between Cannell and ABC executives Marcy Carsey and Tom Werner, the powers would be in the suit, not the man. So I went back to Marcy and Tom and I said, okay, I'll do it, but I have one provision. And they said, what's that? I said, the powers have to be in the suit, not in the guy. And the powers only happen when he puts the suit on. And other than that, he's just you or me and they went for that. The series was very different from previous superhero shows because the emphasis was on our main character, Ralph. Rising above his superhero antics, Cannell wanted to steer clear of the cliche Adventures of Superman style episodes, which were mainly directed at kids. The design of the symbol on the front of the suit actually came about after a costume designer asked Cannell what emblem he wanted on the suit. He wasn't sure, so the costume designer found a pair of square-handled scissors on his desk and held them upside down and said, There, here's your emblem. Cannell agreed. Warner Brothers, who owned the rights to DC Comics, would file a lawsuit against the ABC network because they thought his powers in the show were similar to that of Superman, but the case was soon dismissed. If anything, the series was more related to the premise of the DC character, Green Lantern, who is given a power ring by aliens, which makes him a superhero. In the season two episode, Don't Mess Around With Jim, we find out that Ralph and Maxwell were not the first duo to receive a suit. Jim Beck and Marshall Dunn, his partner, were given a suit, just like Ralph and Maxwell. But Jim used the power of the suit for his own selfish needs. When the aliens discover this, they take the suit away from him. The ABC network wanted to change the surname of the main hero, and change the last name from Hinckley to Hanley in the latter part of the first season. Due to the character bearing the same last name of John Hinckley Jr., the shooter who shot 
and wounded the current president at that time, Ronald Reagan. The character ended up being referred to on the show as either Ralph or Mr. H. In the season 2 premiere of the series, the producers would return the character's surname to the original last name of Hinckley. In casting the lead role of teacher Ralph Hinckley, they cast likeable actor William Catt, who had already starred in films like Big Wednesday and Carrie. Cat fit the role of the everyman swept into a world of adventure after receiving the suit perfectly. William Cat hated wearing the suit and found it to be very uncomfortable so a number of modifications to the suit were made to make him more comfortable. Robert Culp was cast as Bill Maxwell, Ralph's reluctant partner. Culp starred in the 60s TV hit I Spy alongside Bill Cosby and was seen in an episode of The Outer Limits among other shows. I cast Robert Culp because Robert Culp has been one of my favorite actors forever. He did a series, it was a western, and I remember it was a half hour black and white western, and I remember that was the first thing I'd ever seen Robert Culp do. And he was just so cool in this, in this western. And I told him once, I said, in track down, you were so cool. And I love that slouchy walk that you had. And he goes, oh man, he said, the walk is everything in a character. The walk is everything. So I remember back from those early days when I was a little bit younger than Robert, and I remember watching him when I was still in school, and I loved him and I spy. I just wanted him in the part. And when he came in and was willing to play not a, an older kind of romantic type of lead, which he is, you know, he's a very handsome man, you know, but was willing to play this guy in a bush jacket with a checkered shirt and just really a strange guy, you know, that he played for me. Um, it, was, it was delightful. Connie Seleka was cast as Pam Davidson, a character who was initially only going to be featured in the pilot episode. Originally, they were going to have a reoccurring theme on the show, that Ralph was going to have a different girlfriend in each episode. But Connie Seleka impressed the producers so much that she stayed on as a regular cast member. However, in season two, she was rarely seen on the show due to her real life pregnancy. William Catt's real life mother, Barbara Hale, ended up playing Ralph's mother, Paula Hinckley, in a few episodes. Faye Grant appeared as one of Ralph's students, Rhonda Blake, in the series. Grant later would star in V the miniseries and the series. Michael Pear was cast as Tony, another one of Ralph's students. Pear was an up-and-coming star of the 80s, starring in a number of films like the cult hit Eddie and the Cruises. William Catt said that at first, he and Robert Culp didn't really get along, but he would add that they were able to use that to their advantage, as their relationship reflected the relationship between their characters on the series. They eventually were able to resolve their differences and move on, and actually become good friends by the end of the series. ABC would officially cancel the series before the last four produced episodes were aired. These lost episodes were sold off for syndication, included in the rest of the series, as part of its package. The memorable Feel Good 80s theme song titled Believe It or Not was composed by Mike Post with Stephen Geyer writing the lyrics while singer Joe Shabbery sang the song. The song was given the title Believe It or Not and the song would actually reach number two on the Billboard charts. And the song was one of the biggest selling songs of 1981 lasting 18 weeks. After the three season run there were talks of doing a fourth season but due to William Catt's commitment to the show Perry Mason, he would not return in a full series as Ralph. Brandon Tartikoff, the head at ABC, thought it was a mistake ending the original series and decided NBC should recreate it with a female protagonist. The main premise of this pilot would show Ralph Hinckley's secret identity finally being revealed to the public, resulting in him becoming a celebrity which the aliens dislike and they tell him he has to find someone else to take over the suit. He finds a young lady named Holly Hathaway, played by Mary Ellen Stewart, and spends most of the episode teaching her how to use the suit. Once the transfer of the suit is made to Holly, they explain that all memory of Ralph's exploits will be purged from the world's memory and remembered only by Ralph, Pam, and Bill. The greatest American hero has become a cult hit 
and has been referenced in many TV shows, including The Big Bang Theory, where we see Sheldon Cooper wearing a Greatest American Hero t-shirt a number of times. The Greatest American Hero was a unique series, but fun and enjoyable. William Catt was wonderful in the role of Ralph, as was the support actors Robert Culp and the lovely Connie Seleka. The overall premise was different to most superhero shows on TV at that time, because the main hero wasn't the well-polished superhero you usually see on TV and movies. And the show was more believable to us as an audience, because any ordinary person could have worn the suit. The Greatest American Hero was a true gem of a show. The effects may look a bit hokey and B-grade by today's standards, and you can forgive this, because the characters are truly what saved this show, from being just a forgettable sci-fi fantasy TV show from the 80s. My name's Jonathan, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like what you see on my channel, please subscribe, and if you would like to become a patron on my Patreon, click on the link below.